Thanks for joining us this week for UND Sports Extra. I'm Alex Seinert. It is Conference Championship Week for North Dakota Swimming and Diving and Indoor Track and Field. Coming up later in the show, we're going to preview both meets as well as look at the WCHA playoffs with Brian Adolski. But first, we start with basketball, where the UND men and women had positioned themselves to either move into or retain the top spot in the Big Sky standings. The top of the Big Sky women's basketball standings was a crowded place at the start of the week, with UND tied for first alongside Montana State and Northern Colorado, all at 11-2. To stay there, a pair of home wins was required against Idaho State and Weber State, two teams North Dakota had beaten earlier this season by a combined eight points. The defensive-minded Bengals succeeded in keeping it close again on Thursday, as neither side led by more than seven points throughout. ISU took a 31-29 lead into halftime, but UND would use a 9-0 run early in the third to establish a lead they would never relinquish. The Bengals would hit just one field goal in the fourth quarter, and that, combined with a season-low 11 turnovers from UND and an 18-for-22 performance from the free throw line, would propel the Fighting Hawks to the 63-56 victory. Mikhaila Dyer would go for 21 points and 7 rebounds in the win, while Lexi Klebo would chip in 10 points, 7 boards, and a career-high tying 4 blocks. Saturday would bring Weber State to the Betty, another team with a penchant for playing UND close. The Wildcats would lead 40-37 at the half, but North Dakota would use a 9-1 run in the third to pull in front. Still a close game in the fourth, though, when UND would put this one away, thanks to a wild sequence of events. Off a Weber miss three, Leah Zabla goes coast to coast for the basket and the foul. She's fired up. So is Wildcat head coach Beth Ann Ord, who would pick up two technical fouls and has to be escorted off the court. Mikhaila Zyre would knock down all four technical free throws in addition to the Zabla three-point play, and UND would never look back from there. They score 30 points in the fourth quarter, and they take the 83-67 victory. Dyer would lead the way with a career-high 30 points to move her past former teammate Maya Lloyd into 13th place on UND's all-time scoring list. Thanks to two wins and a loss apiece from Montana State and UNC, North Dakota now sits alone atop the Big Sky at 13-2 with just three games remaining. Huge emotional win. Um, we knew if we could get this win, um, we'd be in a good position for next week. So we just really fed off the crowd. We had a great crowd tonight. Our fans really got into it, so that was helpful. After three straight wins at home, the North Dakota men would keep momentum rolling on the road, first in Pocatello against Idaho State. UND would drill nine first half threes against the Bengals zone to build a 40-33 lead at the break before pulling away in the second for the 77-61 victory. Corey Baldwin and Gino Crandall would combine for nine of UND's 13 trays on the night as each would score 18 points apiece to pace the Fighting Hawks. Drick Bernstein would go for a season-high 16 points on 8 of 11 shooting, while Quinton Hooker and Cortez Seals would both finish in double figures as well to help UND complete the season sweep of ISU. The win over the Bengals would only add to the importance of Saturday's tilt against league leaders and reigning conference champs Weber State, the team North Dakota trailed by a half game in the standings. UND had never beaten the Wildcats in Ogden and found themselves down by three at the half, but a 16-4 run to open the second vaulted the Fighting Hawks to the front, a position they would not relinquish. Weber would fight back in the latter stages, cutting UND's lead to two with four minutes left, but back-to-back -back buckets from Quentin Hooker and Cortez Seals would effectively put the game away. UND would hold Weber to just two of 12 shooting from three and out-rebound the Wildcats by 10 in the 77-68 victory. Hooker would drop 22 points and eight boards, plus UND would get 19 from Gino Crandall and 17 from Seals to go along with 52% shooting from the field as a team to sweep the Wildcats for the first time in school history and overtake them for the top spot in the big sky. Another outstanding week on the hardwood for North Dakota. We'll chat with Travis Brewster a little later in the show, but coming up next, Brian Jones joins us in studio. UND Sports Extra on Midco Sports Network is presented by Farmers Union Insurance and the University of North Dakota. 
Well, there is a new team at the pinnacle of the Big Sky men's basketball standings. It is the North Dakota Fighting Hawks. And Brian Jones here to talk to us about another great week for UND basketball. Coach, got to feel pretty good being at the top looking down on everybody this week. Yeah, it's it's been a, a long year, but our guys have really earned it. I couldn't be more proud of them. Obviously, last week was a huge week for us going to Idaho State, not overlooking them and uh, for the Weber State game, then going into Weber and um, overcoming some adversity in the first half and really just staying the course throughout the whole second half and staying together. And boy, I mean, we really defended at a high level and that's, that's why we won the game. But I thought we really took a lot of steps forward individually and as a program this last week. And now it's now with that new number one um, mark that we have now it's now it's it's the focus got to continue to stay the same because we haven't arrived yet we're still making our, and earning our way there's still a lot of basketball left yeah so three games left in the regular season um you got to that number one spot by again a couple of big wins on the road this past week starting on thursday night in pocatello a game that again good defensive effort from your team from start to finish but the three-point shooting really lifted you guys to another level in this game it did i think we made 14 threes and it had a lot to do our game plan going into that was just making the extra pass and, and being unselfish uh, you're going to get pass up a good shot for a great shot and you know Idaho State's really played well at home and, and they made a run but again I, th I thought it was our defense that sparked us in that second half uh, to get us that separation that we needed. Yeah you held them to 37 percent shooting from the field only 18 percent from three you forced 18 turnovers 10 of which came off steals just another really good lockdown night for uh, against a team that can really put put the basketball in the hoop. They can obviously get a couple guys who can really score have a lot of individual talent but uh I mean, when, that's been our recipe for success. When we really lock in and defend individually and collectively as a whole, that allows us to go out and do what we do best, and that's playing the open floor. And I think that's how we uh, it sparked us. It got our energy going to where it was a little low early in the game, but then once we started defending, it got us going and, and it set the tone. Yeah, you got the big 77-61 win in what really could have been a trap game with Weber State lurking a game that everybody was looking forward to on Saturday, a rematch of a game that you won by six points in January. This, of course, a team that you'd never beaten on their home floor, defending conference champs, preseason favorites, all this stuff. The moment, though, did not seem too big for your guys on Saturday nights. I tell you what, the whole day, shoot around, whatever, the whole day, our guys were just, you could tell they were locked in, they were confident, they, were ne they, they weren't nervous at all, they were just quiet, confident, confident in, in who they were in the game plan, and they went out, and, and really, they set the tone from the start, that first four minute game, and even through the, the final nine minutes of the half without Geno in foul trouble, our guys just stayed the course, and we felt really good at halftime, and in the second half, we came out, and started with a couple stops and got out in transition and really set the tone. We jumped on them in that first four minute game and had the lead and we never relinquished that lead after that. Yeah, that big 16 to four run really propelled you guys to that leading position. You mentioned Gino missing the end of the first half. Was his reemergence in the second the biggest difference there to make that run? I think so. I, I think so defensively because he was in charge of guarding Singlin. Uh, who's all, you know, Gino's usually always has the top offensive player from the guard play. And, not a lot of people uh, get into that, but man, it's, it's, it's a hard task running a team and then having to defend the, the best offensive player in the other. So it just sh shot in the arm. It allowed Q to get off the ball and get some shots, but also um, allowed us to play fast. I mean, it just it's, it's, he's just a different player in the open floor. He pushes the tempo for us offensively and defensively, so it was a big shot in the arm. But I thought our guys, our, I mean, Cortez Seals, you got to yeah. talk about him when he in, in the second half alone um, really got, I think, six or eight straight points for us. That's what really got our energy going and confidence-wise. And I thought our guys just did a nice job of getting him the ball in, in areas to where he could attack. Yeah, Seals, Hooker, and Crandall, a big part of the 77-68 win. You now control your own destiny in the big sky at top of the league with three games remaining. Another big road trip coming up against Northern Colorado. You would love to keep this momentum going, certainly, against a Bears team that always seems to play close. They do. I mean, regardless of their record, they've uh, they played well last weekend. We, we needed overtime to beat them in our building. That's what, I mean, it's, it doesn't matter what the records are. They, they're, they're a team that plays unselfishly. They play together. Together and they're scary because they've had so many close games. It's no different than a week from now. Portland State's lost a lot of close games, but they drilled us in their building, and then we needed overtime to beat Sac State. So our, our three games, I feel we have the toughest run of Eastern Washington and, and, and Weber to finish this league race out. I think we have the toughest the toughest stretch. Even though we have two at home, it's just teams that match up well against us. It's not always about records, about how you match up against your opponent. Yeah, it is uh, an exciting time of the year, even with that tough stretch ahead, knowing that if you win those three games, you're going to be a conference well, champion. We all, we all want to be in that position. That's where we're at. Yeah, good spot to be. Well, best of luck again this week Thank against you. the Bears coach. We'll talk to you about it next week. From one conference leader to another, Travis Brewster joins us to talk about the great stretch for UND women's basketball after the break.
Only two weeks remain in the Big Sky women's basketball season, and everybody in the conference is looking up at Travis Brewster and the University of North Dakota. Coach, a couple of big wins this past week to put yourself in that position. I know there's still a couple of games left in this regular season, but you got to feel great about where your team's at right now. Well, yeah. I mean, we started out a little bit rough, obviously, in the preseason mm -hmm. non-conference schedule, but turn it, turned it around there at uh, Christmas time, and they've done a nice job since then. And, you know, winning on the road's a tough thing, but it's been vital for us to be able to have this opportunity. Yeah, certainly a lot of success there. More success at home this past week. You finally get to come back home after yeah. a long road trip. You take on Idaho State on Thursday. This was a team that pushed you to overtime in Pocatello earlier this year. This game didn't quite get that far, but another tight game between you and the Bengals this week. It, it's always been that way. There's never been a real, you know, just somebody just blowing somebody out. It's always been a knock, drag down, you know, kick them, scratch them, hold them, whatever you think of type of basketball game. And credit to them how they play. You know, they play hard and, uh, you know, I, I thought our team figured out a way to get it done in the third and fourth quarter. Yeah, that's really when you kicked in. It was a tight game throughout. Nobody had a lead of bigger than seven points. That was the final margin in this one, a seven point win for you. It felt like in the end, even though they locked you down at times defensively, your defense and your rebounding really ended up being the difference in this yeah, game. Yeah, well, you know, Alex, with the height, you know, that's a big thing. They were Samantha Roscoe on the floor and obviously Fallon Freegy and Lexi Claybo, but I thought our guards did a good job of rebounding as well. So it, it was a group effort in there to be able to get that one done. Yeah, only shot 32% from the floor, but you were great at the free throw line. I think 18 of 22, 82%. You get the 63-56 win. And then you turn your attention to Weber State as the completely different style of team. Obviously, you go from the, the nice patient half-court set type of a team with Idaho State to the frenetic pace of Weber. Just like in the Idaho State game on Thursday, you trailed against Weber at the half on Saturday, but a big third quarter, just like that game against the Bengals, propelled you guys to a wonderful victory. Seven of 17, by the way, in the third quarter in both of those games from the floor. Just, just a coincidence that you had a great push after halftime. Well, you, you know, part of it is too, you want to play your best basketball going in and down the stretch. And we talked about getting out to better starts. We're a little bit better with that. Not quite where we need to be, but it's been better. But that third quarter, we come out and, and we really try to establish ourselves on both ends of the floor and then try to carry over in the fourth quarter. So again, our, I think our players have done a very good job of grasping from those concepts. Yeah, that breathing space you got in the third carried over to the fourth. The big sequence that everybody was talking about, the yeah. seven point play that you had that really opened this yeah. game up. Not a lot of seven point plays out there in basketball. You guys were the beneficiaries of this one. Yeah, I've seen five. I've never seen seven. <laughs> so, uh, you know, it, it's part of the game though. You know, yeah. it, it just goes to show you anything can happen in a basketball game. You gotta be ready to go. And, you know, you gotta knock, step up and knock down free throws. And, you know, that's part of the basketball game for us is starting to shoot better from the free throw line. Yeah, Mikayla Dyer did that for you on that occasion, four straight technical free throw attempts that she knocks down. She finishes with 30 points, another huge night for her. Just another case of those kids that you need to rely on. Stepping up big, Lexi Claybo with the big week for you, Sam Roscoe playing well. Everybody seems to be clicking now. Even Leah Zabla coming back strong. Everybody's playing their best basketball at well, the time. The big thing about uh, Mikayla is that she's always had that ability. It's just, uh, she's starting to find the, you know, just the little breakdowns in the defense. And I think our our players are doing a very good job getting the ball in the right spot, but at the same time, she's doing a great job of creating within our offense, not really breaking down the offense, going one-on-one. -on -one. It's more, okay, here I can get this out of there, and it's great recognition by her. Um, you know, and, and the rest of the players have done a good job. You know, Lexi goes out, and obviously we miss her for about, a, you know, 10 yeah. minutes of the game with an injury, and then she comes back, and, and, you know, but it's part of it, you know, and I just like how our players are all relying on each other out there on the floor. Yeah, we get the big 16-point win against Weber State. You've now won 14 of your last 16, I think 25 of your last 28 in conference play, dating back to last season. You're in sole possession now of first place in the conference. Three games remaining, but it's not going to be easy. A couple of tough tests coming up, including a big home game against Northern Colorado this Saturday. Well, Northern Colorado is a good ball club, you know, and obviously they they're coming here to play and they, they have their own goals in mind. Yeah. But you know, for us, we look at it as the next game is up and, and this is one that we need to play. Uh, at this time of the year, all the games matter. You know, it's conference, you know. Uh, obviously, with three games left, you want you would like to finish a certain way. And for us, our goal is to go 3-0 and if we can. And, and we have to work at it, though. Nobody's going to give it to you. And when you play at home in front of our crowd, it's going to be exciting. It's great for our seniors to be able to have that last home game. Uh, you know, it, it's just one of those type of games, though, that should be electric. Yeah, we expect it to. The Bears just a game behind you in the standings. A lot at stake this weekend, Coach. Enjoy it. Enjoy that last regular season home game, and best of luck. Yeah, thanks. Travis Brewster, everybody. When we come back, we're going to switch over to women's hockey and catch up with Brian Nadalski in light of the WCHA quarterfinals, which are coming up this weekend.
Well, the regular season for North Dakota women's hockey is now in the books. The postseason begins this weekend. And here to catch us up on everything is the head coach, Brian Adolski. And Brian, another another regular season done. It feels like we were just previewing the season not that long ago. It feel like it goes by quick for you? This was a super fast season for whatever reason. Uh, you know, with uh, some of the younger kids and all the teaching and, and a good group, uh, it really does feel like we just started. Yeah, um, you finally get to come home. That was probably part of the reason. You've only played a handful of home games in, in 2017. You get come off a couple of tough series against Duluth and Minnesota. You get to come back for your first real home weekend of the year. A couple of good games against Ohio State this weekend. Yeah, I really thought uh, we played better on Friday. I thought we were pretty dominant. Uh, they just capitalized on a couple of our mistakes and uh, got to play with the lead and uh, you know did what they needed and, uh, to win a hockey game Friday. Saturday, we were a little more methodical. I, I didn't know if we were sharp with the short turnaround, but uh, you know what? We uh, did what we needed to do to win a hockey game and get a little bit of confidence and more importantly, send our seniors out uh, with a win. Yeah, certainly. Um, back on that Friday game, you mentioned you outplayed the Buckeyes really again, 34 to 15. Again, you outshoot them. Seventh time this season, though, that shot margin didn't translate into a victory. They get the 4 to 2 win. Yeah, I, again, I didn't think we took care of the puck. I thought we were dominant with the forecheck and turnovers. Uh, it didn't finish uh, as well as uh, we could have, should have. Uh, and, you know, they got a bounce. They got a couple things uh, to go their way. And, a little easier playing with the lead in our league for sure. Yeah, certainly. And that was the case then on Saturday. You come back a similar shot advantage. You get a goal in every period. You build that 3-1 to one lead and then you hang on for the 3-2 victory. A nice, as you said, a nice boost for your girls to come back. You break kind of a long, winless drought and get a little momentum heading into the playoffs. Oh, absolutely. And like I talked about, you know, it being senior night, that was pretty important yeah. uh, for all the festivities for us to get a W. Yeah, um, you mentioned those seniors, a group of nine, playing their last regular season game at the Ralphville. Of course, have a little more postseason action to take place on home ice. But just talk about what that group has really meant to this program over these last three or four years. Well, I mean, there's such a wide variety of uh, personalities and uh, skill sets. Uh, it's just a nice group. You know, uh, Ali krzyanek has been a dominant defenseman. Amy Menke up front. You know, Jordan Hampton, Grayson Hershey have also been solid. You know, you talk about Marvin and that group and all that she went through and Annie Chipman and Kayla Gardner. It's just a really solid group of kids uh, that uh, work hard every day and it's been fun to be around. Yeah, need to send them out with a 3-2 win in their last regular season home game. They now get to face the same team they just beat coming up this weekend in the WCHA quarterfinal series, the 4-5 matchup against Ohio State. We were talking a little bit ago, this is a team that even though you've only got one victory against them this season, you've really outplayed this team basically every game you've faced them this year. Yeah, shot totals and uh, play and uh, attempted shots and face off. I mean, basically, statistically, every way you could uh, beat a team we have, except for what's most important, that's a scoreboard. So we're looking forward to playing them again and kind of righting some of those wrongs. And, uh, you know, it's just like pro hockey now. I mean, we're playing a best of five series and back to back weekends. I think that's awesome. And uh, we're looking forward to it. Yeah, there's something special about that postseason atmosphere. Is there a little extra step with the girls this week, knowing, hey, now we've reached a chance to make to move on and make the national championship? Well, I, I think uh, that's a big part of it, kind of the starting over, and this is what we've played all year for. But also, you know, it's been nice with the weather. It feels sure. like playoff hockey. Yeah. It really does. So, uh, you know, there's a lot of new energy around the building because of that. And, we're just looking forward to uh, getting after it on Friday. Yeah, best of three series, as you said, beginning on Friday against Ohio State. Coach, congrats again on another solid regular season at the helm. Best of luck against the Buckeyes this weekend. Appreciate it. Thanks, Alex. Brian Adolski. Well, more conference championships to come. We're going to be talking swimming and diving and indoor track and field coming up next. UND Sports Extra on Midco Sports Network is presented by Farmers Union Insurance and the University of North Dakota. Welcome back. Well, the season for Winter Sports Conference Championships gets underway this week, beginning Wednesday in Houston, Texas, the destination for UND's best in the pool for the Wax Swimming and Diving Championships. North Dakota has won five individual titles and one relay crown in the last three years under Chris Maiello, but the head coach is hoping his athletes can take it one step further this time around. Really what we're staring at is an NCAA championship berth. Um, that would be our first into the Division One era. We have a couple athletes on both sides who are well within capable of doing that and uh, hopefully we can get it done, uh, particularly Noah Lucas in the 50 free and Jacob Walensky in the 1650. Um, it's going to be real close. Uh, hundreds of seconds may decide whether they go to NC2As or they're at home. 
Well, it could be a record-breaking week for North Dakota down in Houston as UND has athletes that rank in the top two in 14 different swimming events. The WAC championships take place from Wednesday through Saturday. UND Track and Field also has a conference meet this week as the 2017 Indoor Track and Field Championships are set to take place in Pocatello, Idaho. Head coach Kevin Galbraith is confident that even though a team title might be out of reach this time around, there are a number of outstanding individuals set to perform well. For this indoor, we're really focused on individual performances this year. Uh, we had a great year as a team last year, and with some of the strategic choices not to compete people this year, we, it, it, will, it will make a difference in our team finish. But we still, we've got one or two people, we, you know, if we can walk away with some high finishes for our individuals, that'll be great. Six athletes from North Dakota rank in the top five in everything from the pole vault to the 400 meters. The conference meet is a three-day affair and begins Thursday in Pocatello at Holt Arena. Elsewhere around UND Athletics, women's basketball and men's and women's hockey are home this weekend, while the rest of the winter and spring sports are all on the road, including five games for women's softball down in Alabama. A little closer to home, Midco Sports Network is the place to watch the final two regular season home games of the year for Bradbury and company, as North Dakota Hockey hosts Omaha on Friday and Saturday nights. If you can't make it to the Ralph in person, we hope you join Jake Brantz, Katie Hale, and I for what's shaping up to be a vital pair of games in UND's quest for a 15th straight NCAA tournament appearance. That's our time for this week. We hope you join us again this weekend for UND Men's Hockey and again next Tuesday night for another edition of UND Sports Extra. Until then, I'm Alex Seinert. Thanks for watching.